Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on shipwrecks and salvage. And once again, we'll be looking at electrolysis. And instead of actually learning about what electrolysis is, which is what we did in the last lesson, we're going to look at how do we optimize it and what conditions are necessary for us to get the correct products. Okay. So we need to know what factors that actually affect electrolysis in the first place. So these factors include the nature of the electrolyte. So what is the electrolyte actually made out of? The nature of the electrode, similar thing for the electrode, what is it made out of? And of course, the concentration of the ions in solution. Okay? So we need to know all three of these things for us to help predict what the products are going to be. So the nature of the electrolyte. The products of the electrolysis will depend on the oxidation and reduction properties of the ions in solution. Okay, so it will. So in order to predict these reactions, we're going to need to know the properties of the actual solution. So if, for instance, you have ions that readily oxidize, like group one metal compounds, potassium or sodium, then the water will reduce at the cathode, because reducing these guys takes a lot more effort than reducing water. So you will tend to see that water will reduce at the cathode if we have very, very oxidized, or ions that, or elements that readily oxidize, okay? So you'll get this kind of reaction happening. And if you look on the back of your reduction tables, you'll actually see this reaction. So it's water plus two electrons gives you hydrogen gas and two OH minus. And this is actually an important reaction for the production of sodium hydroxide. So industrial chemistry will study this in great detail. Now the reason why this happens is because it takes more energy to reduce the ions such as sodium or potassium compared to water. And so nature will always take the lowest energy pathway. Now what about the nature of the electrode? Well in some cases the electrode can participate in the electrolysis reaction. The oxidation of the metal electrode or the anode will always occur preferentially to any ions in solution. So the oxidation of a metal electrode will always happen ahead of any of the ions in solution. Okay, so oxidation of the metal will always occur before the oxidation of any of the ions. A metal as the cathode will not likely accept electrons because it's a metal, so it won't really want to take in electrons. So in general, metal cathodes won't reduce because they don't want to take in electrons. They're happy to just give them to the ions and let them become uh, metal or some other, um, or a non-metal depending on what they are, okay? And the concentration of ions. The concentration of ions can have a strong impact on the products in electrolysis. So you look here, we have dilute and concentrated solutions. And whether you're dilute or concentrated will basically um, determine a lot of things about your electrolysis. In general, the more concentrated the ion, the more likely it will be a reactant. Okay, so the more ions you have, the more likely they will react with uh, or react in the electrolysis. So predicting electrolytic reactions, in order to predict the outcome of an electrolysis reaction, we need the table of standard potentials. So that's on the back of your periodic table. Since there are lots of reactants, you need to consider all possible reduction and oxidation reactions. Okay, so we need to look at everything. So let's take, for example, another simple one, the reduction, the, the electrolysis of NaCl. So there are four possible reactions occurring. So here are the possible oxidation half reactions. You've got the chloride ion becoming chlorine gas and releasing two electrons. And that has an E0 value of minus 1.36 volts. Now you've got water. Water turns into oxygen gas plus 4H plus plus 4E minus. And that's 1.23. So you can look these up on the back of your periodic table. Now the possible reduction half reactions, the sodium reducing to sodium, the sodium ion reducing to sodium metal is 2.71 or negative 2.71, whereas the water is negative 0.83. 
So you can look this reaction up as well. Now the set of equations that gives the lowest total E0 value, um, so in terms of magnitude, the, so it could be the lowest negative number, um, will be the most likely set of reactions. So obviously this one is really big in a negative sense. So if we add it to another negative number, that negative number will get very large. So we want the, the magnitude of that number, so the size of that number to reduce, so be close to zero. Um, so you can see that it would be the water reacting first in general. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on optimizing electrolysis. We have to, when you optimize electrolysis, you have to be aware of all the factors that go into um, electrolysis reactions. So we move on to the question segment. So question six: A student is interested in investigating the electrolysis of water using different electrodes. Why is a little sodium sulfate added to water before he begins the electrolysis? Okay. So why do we want to add a little bit of sodium sulfate before the electrolysis? So sodium ions and sulfate ions are not oxidized or reduced. So in general, we won't see these two ions participating in the electrolysis. However, because water is a non-conductor, they, they, it requires some ions um, to allow current to pass. So we need some, a small amount of ions just to get things going. Um, so that's why we have to add a small amount of sodium sulfate before we begin the electrolysis. If the student uses platinum or graphite electrodes, will he observe any differences in the electrolytic products? Okay, nope. Both of these electrodes are inert. So graphite and platinum are both completely inert. So they won't react with the solution so you won't see any difference in electrolytic products. Which set contains factors which, affect, which all affect the rate of electrolysis? So temperature, concentration of electrolyte, source of power. So source of power doesn't affect it as long as we get power, so it's probably not A. Distance between electrodes, shape of the container, and temperature. Probably not the shape of the container, that's probably not too big a deal. And the distance between the electrodes, again, is not very big, unless, of course, you're sparking them or something. The nature of the electrodes, the nature of the electrolyte and voltage. So all of these are pretty likely, so that might be it. Or D, concentration of the electrolyte, electrolyte voltage applied, and area of the electrodes. Immersed, so it's probably not D. So C is probably our answer, yep. Because the area doesn't really change the rate of reaction we need the number of electrons, so it's the only thing. Okay, so the nature of the electrodes we know, the nature of the electrolyte we also talked about in this lesson, and the voltage is the amount of energy that we're actually putting in to, um, into the system. So that's of course going to be a factor. Okay. So when predicting the outcomes of electrolysis reactions, the reactions that have the lowest combined E0 value are the most likely. Why is this so? Low E0 values represent low amounts of energy to force the reaction to occur. So having small numbers close to zero of E0 means that less energy is needed to get reactions to happen. So lower energies mean that for a given input of energy, more reactions can occur. This makes lower energy reactions more favorable for electrolysis reactions. So remember that nature always takes the lowest energy path because it's sort of like falling down a hill. If you have a ball and you roll it down a hill, that's fine. It will roll down the hill naturally. Whereas if you're at the bottom of the hill, the ball won't try to roll itself up the hill because that's just not what it does. Okay? So it will always try to take the lowest energy pathway. So if a metal anode is used and it oxidizes, it oxidizes, why does it oxidize preferentially to the anodes in the solution? So why does it oxidize ahead of the anions in the solution? Well, as an anion in the solution, they're more stable because when you produce an ion, it naturally is more stable because it has a full octet shell. Now, the 
metal may not have that full octet structure, so it may not be as stable as the anion in solution. So since the, previously, the anion previously reacted with a cation to obtain a full octet, it's unlikely that it would react as it is stable in this form. So it's already stable, so it doesn't want to react anyway. Therefore, the metal as a pure metal would be more likely to give up its electrons compared to the anion, because it's less stable than the anion itself. Okay? Now, last question, question 10. Why does a higher concentration of ions usually result in an increased likelihood of reaction? Well, in order for a chemical species to react at the anode or cathode, it must come in contact with it, because the electron has to be transferred from the cathode or anode to the species in question. With higher concentrations of ions, there is a higher chance that the ions will reach the, the electrode as there are more of them. Just because there's more of them, more chance that it will collide with the electrode. And this, of course, increases the likelihood of the ion reacting. Because remember that the ions are very strongly attracted to the positive or negative terminals because they're charged. Whereas the water is not as strongly attracted because it's only polar, and, in, and other polar molecules might get in the way. So the ions will try to get to the electrode, will actually be attracted to the electrode, whereas the water won't be. So having more electrons means that, sorry, having more ions means that there's more chance that an ion will come into contact with the electrode and form metal, okay? Or reduce, form gas. So that concludes today's lesson on electrolysis, and it concludes this series on electrolysis. So we've looked at what electrolysis is, and how do we optimize it, and also what are the factors that affect an electrolysis reaction. So in the future, we'll look at how electrolysis can be used to prevent corrosion. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.